Today, we're talking you through a product photo shoot with my good friend and professional product photographer, Ross Floyd. Then we're tackling part of the post-production process where we're retouching and extending backgrounds in Photoshop. Hey everyone, welcome to Flurn. My name is Aaron Nace. You can find me at flurn.com where we make learning fun. I'm so excited to bring you this short snippet. We worked with my good friend, Ross Floyd. He's a professional product photographer. He's shot over 70,000 individual products during his career. And we've worked with Ross to create multiple tutorials to bring you through the photography part of product photography, as well as the retouching. And just for you, our YouTube audience, we've actually cut together multiple sections from multiple different tutorials and brought them together for this exclusive look at the tutorials. Let's go ahead and jump in as Ross and I discuss his method for photographing this handbag on a custom built set. Super excited. We are photographing leather bags on a variety of colored backgrounds. You still want those shots on white. We need to know how to get them, but we wanted to just add something with a little bit more flavor. A little style. A little bit of style. We constructed three sides of a box, drilled a hole in one of the pieces of MDF, and we have our subject holding the handbags. Absolutely. We, we started with a, a three foot soft box with both baffles in, so it's super diffused soft lighting. I just want to start off in a very safe place see what happens. We decided that after a little bit of experimentation, we wanted a little bit more directional light and maybe make it some sort of an angular element in the composition. And that's mm -hmm. without introducing the bag. So we actually removed one of the baffles in the soft box. That's the translucent material okay. used to diffuse the light. Got and there's it. usually two, or there can be two in there, one that's closer to the bulb and one that's further away. And what that does is it removes a layer of diffusion and allows it to become really a giant reflector, but it still has very like light shadows to it because it's still bouncing a ton of light around. It's a little bit brighter here also right. because we removed some of the diffusion material so more light was able to go through. Yeah, the exposure is brighter now. We compensate for that as well in this next shot. So in order not to wear Angela out, we had her take her arm out and relax a little bit. <laughs> yeah, totally. You know, this takes a lot of energy to yeah. keep it up. And we introduced the bag to the set. Okay. And right away we noticed that this side of the bag was pretty dark. So we added a white bounce card in. And here's here's the example of what that looks like. It's much, much more attractive. So again, that's just a piece of uh, white foam core. What that's doing is reflecting some of the overhead light right. back onto the bag. So now that we have the bag looking great, we're gonna reintroduce Angela again, which is this next image. And right away, we, we've kind of run into a little bit of a problem. <laughs> Our set's very small. Right. We didn't really think these straps were that long. But we can still work around it. So first we tried to have a razor arm, you know, simple solution, yeah. right? But you can only raise your arm so far when it's sticking through a piece yeah. of board. <laughs> <laughs> <Totally>. <laughs> Without it totally looking awkward and again, not, uh, not graceful. So the other thing we noticed was that we had a green cast from the actual set reflected into our bag. And we didn't, since this is such a light color, we didn't want it to look sickly. So what we did was introduce a, a little white bounce card in there to, mm -hmm. to keep that color bleed from affecting the bag. Mm -hmm. Now we do want that to be green eventually. Right, so we'll remove that card. We'll there. remove the card in Photoshop. And then when we did that, we actually noticed that this shadow is really kind of awkward and well-defined. So we went back and we changed our light again. Okay. We lowered the three-foot octabank and we put a little piece of diffusion over the interior baffle. Okay. So we have, now we have a double thick layer of diffusion in front of the actual light. Okay. So it's still directional, but much softer. Oh, it is much softer, And yeah. let me show you that side by side. It's really, you can really see it in her, in oh, two places. Yeah, in, totally. in this kind of shadow underneath her arm but also look behind the bag. See how there's a really well-defined kind of mm. awkward, weird shape there? Mm -hmm. Now it's less defined. Yeah, I always thought of like soft boxes as like, this is how it is, you right. know? But it's good to know that you can make it a harder light source by removing some of the diffusion or even softer by adding more diffusion. We definitely have to take a look at her hand gesture, but that's the last thing we need to solve for. Okay. We, we want to get our camera in place and then I'll give her direction and we can play with that a little bit more. That makes sense. The other thing we need to pay attention to are how these straps are looking and they're not very symmetrical. A very practical way to solve that is to shift our camera to the left. Add a benefit, it makes her arm look longer. So let's see what that looks like. Yeah, that looks instantly yeah. way better. So we just shifted the camera to the left. Uh -huh. Looks like her hand is a little bit higher there, which looks good. 
So we had to extend our arm even further in the set. Mm -hmm. So now we even have more distance between the bag and the wall. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I get lower. So in this next shot, I'll lower the camera. So now we have almost even space between the bag and the wall and the bag and the, I guess we call it floor, maybe? Yeah, that definitely makes a big difference. Just looking at the top, you know, that hand is really close to the border of the pink, but we know in Photoshop you can just extend that pink super easy. Exactly. And now that she's extended her arm a little bit more and raised it up a little bit, although uncomfortable, it gives a nice S shape to the composition. So we're looking good. We added another bounce card to the front. You can see that really filling in the areas in the bottom of the bag that were kind of looking dingy before. We have a lot of variations, and, and we really had to pay attention to our hands because they change. It's really hard to hold your arm like that. <laughs> yeah, she for sure. She was so patient and nice when we did that. Definitely. Yeah. I would maybe only use this one, but also change the position of the bag as well. We could choose her hand from one, right. the bag from another, ground from another, and put all these together. Exactly. We could even go as far as to take just the straps, if the straps look great in one and the bag looks great in another. I really like this hand placement, mm -hmm. but I also really like a little further up this one as well, because her fingers are really nicely shaped, but this is also more active. Take home points for this one, there's just one light. There is only one light. It's a soft box. We took off the front baffle, but then we added some more diffusion in there to soften it up. It has that relatively well-defined shadow, but it's still soft at the same time. It flatters her arm, it flatters the bag. You don't need a ton of different lights to create really great product photos. But I will mention that those bounce cards, super important here. Absolutely. Now what we're going to do is extend these backgrounds because we want this to be a very graphic image. Uh, at the moment, it looks great, especially if we just like cropped in, but I want a little bit more to work with. In my background extension, what we're going to do is start off by using the clone stamp tool. So let's hit S for the clone stamp tool. I'm going to hold Alt or Option and sample right over here and then paint right over here. Just paint it in. There we go, and we're just extending our background. It's just making, it, this is an exact copy, basically, okay? Everything we see is just getting copied exactly. There we go, and we're gonna go, we'll do this with the pink too, because we're already, we already have our clone stamp selected. There we go, we'll do that with the pink there as well. Okay, so we can see we've extended our pink and our green all the way to the right. Our next step is I want to bring the green that we've got here, I want to bring that all the way down. Okay, and it's going to be out of focus, which is, thank God, because there's no texture on there. So we're going to create a new layer. I'm going to choose this color. So I'll hold Alt or Option and sample this color with my brush tool. And then we're going to simply just paint in with our brush tool right there. There we go. And we just paint in right down there. Let's just turn this levels on just to make sure you, you know, we painted everything we needed to. There we go. And that's looking pretty good. Now let's take this lighter color that's here, turn the levels on. You can clearly see it's a little bit lighter than it is down here. The lighter color and we'll just kind of fade that through there as well. So sample that color and just kind of paint that in there. So bringing this in, now you can see that lighter color just kind of fades in. And what we did at the same time is we reduced the, uh, we reduced the opacity of that shadow, maybe just a little bit much. So I'm gonna grab a layer mask and we'll just layer mask that out just a little bit. There we go. So it does reduce the opacity of the shadow, but not by a ton. Now we have another choice we can make, and that's do we want it to get lighter as it comes down or darker? Because it's there has to be a light change, right? It doesn't look realistic right now because there's no change of light as it gets closer to us. So what we're gonna do is grab a levels adjustment layer, okay? We'll try lighter to start with. If it doesn't work, we'll just go darker. It doesn't matter. We'll hit Control or Command I on the layer mask, and then I'm gonna use my gradient tool. So G for the gradient tool. We'll choose our linear gradient here, our foreground transparent gradient, and I'm gonna click and drag from the bottom straight up. Just make sure white is set as your foreground color. Okay, 
Now what this does is it just creates a light gradient on the bottom there. Now again, originally I said, I don't know if it needs to be lighter or darker. You just kind of like work with your levels adjustment to see. So here it is a little bit lighter and we just move this and we're getting a little bit darker. Um, I think darker does actually make sense as far as like lighter draws more attention down to the bottom, darker pulls attention away. Uh, but I do want to hit Control or Command T and just stretch out that gradient just to make it a little bit smoother. All right, and it's coming up too high. I only want it to be visible in the green there. There we go, and it can be subtle. It just, you don't want it to be, all be the same color there. See how flat that looks? It doesn't look like it's three-dimensional at all. So just by putting a little bit of a gradient there just helps it out. Now this back surface, it's on the same focal plane as the, the camera sensor, okay? So it doesn't need a light variation in order to look realistic, but something that's coming towards the camera, you're gonna see that light and dark variation very clearly. Now let's go ahead, we're gonna create another layer, S for the clone stamp tool, and we're gonna sample this boundary here. So let's hold Alt or Option and sample this boundary. And I'm gonna bring this right up. Now, one, uh, one tip here, if you guys don't see this little preview, go to Window and down to Clone Source, and you'll have a little option here for Show Overlay. Be sure that's clicked, and then you'll be able to see a little preview of what you're actually gonna be painting. And that's super helpful because you can just line everything up perfectly. There we go. And we have a photographic edge here between this blue and the pink, right? Like that's, we photographed that edge. So, you know, I don't necessarily want to just try to make my own edge there because it's just gonna look more real if we use the actual photographed edge. All right, looks like I included a little bit of the, her subject's arm there. So just paint that out there. All right, and I'm just lifting up my cursor every couple brush strokes here, which is just gonna sample directly beneath wherever I'm painting. The sample stays in the same relative place to wherever I'm painting. There we are. Just kind of building out a little bit more space here. And as I just continue to go straight, we're going straight up here, right? So it's, you know, the edge just goes straight up and I'm clone stamping straight up. There we go. Very nice. So that's an edge that looks like a photograph from you know, from here to here, because it, it, we just clone stamped it. Now, the next step is to use our brush tool. We're gonna hold Alt or Option, bring our brush flow up to like really pretty high, like 80%, and I just need to paint all this stuff in pink. Uh, and then I wanna zoom out, turn my levels on, and just make sure that I got everything for one, and then, you know, you can see it's getting a little bit darker over here. So let's turn our levels back off bring our brush flow down to about 30% and make a large brush. Let's turn this levels back on so you can just see what I'm doing. It's, it's subtle stuff, but you can see I'm basically just painting in a gradient over here. There we go. Just painting it a little bit darker right over here. It's just gonna help it make it look more realistic at the end of the day. There we are, let's turn that back off. We're probably not gonna use all that up there, but might as well make it look good if we can. Okay, now some of this is getting, uh, is getting this detail, but really, I mean, this detail here that's in the, uh, in the board itself, that, that's not necessarily like adding to the image. In other words, we wanna see the detail in the bag, this detail in the board, it's not as as important really. So I might even wind up downplaying that detail with a blur 
But for now, let's just use our brush tool and we'll just kind of paint this up there. All right, I just need to erase this real quick where the pink spilled over a little bit. Turn our levels back on and just make sure we're looking pretty clear. We, we are looking good. Um, there's a little bit of a, if I turn my levels back on, you can see it. See, so it just kind of gets darker here. So what I'm going to do is, uh, here we go, just create a new layer. We're going to clone stamp. So let's just sample here. And bring that right up there. Looks like I clone stamped the, uh, that little spot there also, but that's not a big deal. Okay, and the brush tool just kind of fade that in. There we are. So at this point, we're actually looking pretty good. Let's just zoom out and see. Uh, looks like we have a slight, you can see it looks like it's getting slightly darker there. So let's just create a new layer. We're just gonna sample this lighter color, just paint it in a little bit there. It's a huge brush right now, so it's just gonna take a little bit of time to kind of catch up. There we go. And that blue surface looks looks really nice. I can see a little bit of a lighter area down here, some color inconsistency there as well. So we're just going to sample this and kind of paint it on down in there as well. And I realize I'm painting over top of the green and over top of the pink a little bit, but uh, that's not really that big of a deal because we can just mask it out. Okay, so let's make this layer invisible. I'll hit P for the pen tool. Just create a new path here. Super easy, just click right up here. Go all the way down to the bottom. You know, click right there. There we go. This path will right click and go to make selection. There we are. And then I'll just make this layer visible and then pop that on the layer mask there. So you can see it's only, you know, it's not gonna be visible there. And then on the mask itself, we'll just go to window and down to properties. And I'll just adjust the feathering until it looks natural, and realistic. There we go, about four pixels is perfect there. And then of course we have to go on our layer mask and then just paint, we just do this with the brush tool, just paint black right over top of the hand. You could most definitely, uh, by the way, use a pen tool and make this a selection if you wanted to. There we go. I'm just gonna use the brush tool, save some time and I feel pretty good about it. All right, hit that slash key just to make sure your layer mask is actually covering everything you need it to cover. Sometimes you'll have like, you know, a little area in there you just don't see. So hitting that slash key that's right above the enter key on your keyboard, uh, that'll just really help out. It'll show you where your layer mask is. There we go. So we can see we just cleaned up that blue really nicely as well. Now at this point, normally I would go ahead and crop in a little bit because that's like kind of obvious that we want to crop. So like C for the crop tool, we would probably go ahead and choose a crop at this point. But what I want to do is just leave this. I'm playing the role of the retoucher here, right? So I want that to be decided by the photographer or the company that this was taken for. Maybe they want to put some, some type on here or maybe they would even want to extend it further. Like maybe they would want, you know, something like this. Let's go ahead and just extend this out and show you if they wanted something like that, then basically 
what I would do, there's a couple ways. I would create a new layer actually, M for my marquee tool. This is actually a pretty cool tool. tool. M for the marquee tool. I'm on a new layer by the way, and I made a stamp visible. So you can go to image and then down to apply image to do that. And then I would go to edit and then content aware scale. It's under edit. And then just stretch that out. All right, hit enter and then deselect. So like, boom, there we go. You gotta, you know, <laughs> easy. You put your type right over there if you wanted to do that. All right, we'll hit it undo a couple times. So we don't obviously need to do that right now, but that's that's what we have. That's the uh, that's our ability now. Well, at this point, I think we're looking really great. So. Thank you so much for watching this exclusive tutorial for our YouTube audience. Now, this is actually a combination of multiple tutorials we created with Ross. Those tutorials combined are over 18 hours in length, covering so many different product photo shoots as well as retouching. So if you'd enjoyed this, you're going to love our product photography tutorials with Ross Floyd. Let us know what you thought of this video. Give us a big thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We'll send you free tutorials every single week. Thank you so much. I'll learn you later. Bye everyone. <laughs> the the rocks. We've got some malachite and some obsidian. Hmm. With rocks Floyd. <laughs> Here you go. Malachite too. For uh clear projection of your throat chakra. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it worked. It worked, Mike. <laughs> See, Mike is so pretty. <laughs> All right, so. Do you want it back? Here. No, I don't want it. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, thanks, Aaron. <laughs> you take your rocks. These are getting heavy. You might be I just, I just don't need it anymore. I mean, you say that after you just had it on, so, you know. I mean, I took I took all its power. Oh, interesting. So it's just totally blowing out the 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 metal. Half it. This is not gonna help. This is gonna. It is gonna help. <laughs>